Nick here from tinywoodstove.com and we're gonna be planning our install for this small wood stove in this off-grid cabin. So there's lots of considerations in planning your install. Um, you can go through the roof, you can go out the wall. Um, lots of people are hesitant about poking a hole through the roof, so they're interested in, in going out the wall. But the wall has um, uh, certain factors with it that, that make it less than ideal. One, you have physics. So ideally, you want the hot flue gases to travel up the flue and out as quickly as possible. Anytime that you ask those flue gases to uh, travel horizontally or at different angles, they slow down. And especially with these smaller diameter stoves, they're not as, as, as hot as, as bigger pipe. And so you just have more problems with that, those gases cooling down. And when those gases cool down, you get draft issues, you can get uh, creosote buildup. So when planning your install, it's best to lay out all your options and all your constraints. So are you constrained to one spot in your bus? Um, are there solar panels on your roof? Do you have a, a deck up top that you can't go through the roof? Do you need to offset over and jog it over? So I, I tend to be um, a, a visual learner and usually wing things. And uh, just giving you a little, uh, a little example of what not to do. We had a, a hot water heater that we were installing in our house and uh, I just kind of dig into it and start, uh, I want to put my hole here. Well, as I have my hole saw and I'm drilling through the wall, I, we have our electrical box right next to that under the cabinet that I'd forgot about. And I start with this hole saw, start tearing through almost every wire of our house that then we had to go back and, and uh, patch and royal, royal pain in the butt. So moral of the story is do a little groundwork and where do wires go? Where do pipes go? Where are studs at? Think through all those things before you start cutting and drilling and tearing junk up. So if, um, and, and looking at this structure, we're in a, a little, I don't know, 12 by 18 off-grid shed roof cabin, uh, which tucked out in the woods. It is insulated. With this uh, stove, we're, we're limited to this corner. We wanna put it in this corner. So with this corner, we have three options. We can go out the roof, we can go out that wall, or we can go out that wall. So we're gonna walk through each of those options, look at the pros and the cons, uh, the price, um, implications with physics, and um, then select the best option. So option number one, this wall. Uh, we took a stud finder and we know that there's a stud here and there's a stud here. So we have plenty of space that we can um, miss studs. We also know that there's no wiring or plumbing inside these walls, so we don't have any issues there. Uh, we are a little close with clearances, so we are gonna have to have a heat shield either on the wall or on the stove pipe and the stove itself as well. Uh, that's not a big deal. It probably would be easiest to put it on the stove and on the pipe. And then as we came out the wall of the structure, we would need uh, basically a, a, a basic wall exit kit. The wall exit kit comes with the thimble, it comes with the T-support, it comes with uh, the single to double adapter, but then you'd need additional chimney to go up from there. Now, a challenge we have with exiting right here is we have this 24 inch eave that comes out and we need to get around that. The best way to get around that is to use an insulated offset. That insulated offset makes it so you don't have to do longer horizontal run to get out past the eave than to go up. You can stick close to the structure and then you can jog it over, which is gonna be more efficient. The, the pros of that is we don't have a hole in the roof. There's obvious, obvious pros there. Uh, this cabin's out in the woods. People may not be out here. Uh, then just, you know, you always have the potential when you poke a hole in the roof, water always has a way to find uh, its, its way in if you're not super diligent. So that's, that's a benefit. So cons to doing a, a wall exit is cleaning your flue. Um, you will have like a nice clean out that you can pop off to do the insulated section, but it's gonna be an extra step because you're gonna have to do that single wall section as well. And really the only option there is you can't do that from the top side. You have to take out the baffle of the stove and do that from the inside. It's not a big deal. And if you're going through the roof, you may do that as well, 
but it is an extra step. You'd have to do the chimney side and then the single wall side. Uh, another con to doing a wall exit is the cost. You have your, your base wall exit kit, you'd need your offsets, and you would need your extra chimney. So the cost to do that is significantly more. And lastly, your stove may not function as efficiently as just going straight up and out. You have those flue gases lingering and doing this jogging, and so you might have draft issues and uh, creosote buildup. So if we exited out of this other wall, it's, it's basically identical to this, uh, this front side, except instead of a 24 inch overhang, it's, a, it's an 18 inch. So there's the, the option that you could, instead of doing your offset, which adds significant cost, you could maybe bump this T out a little bit more to get up past the eave. There again, you still have, you know, a, a longer horizontal run. Plus you have that, you'd have the aesthetic of, you know, your T and your T support and then some type of um, uh, shimming to get it out to where it needs to be. So compared to option one coming out the front, it would cost less because you'd have fewer parts. You wouldn't have those uh, offset elbows but it, it might not be as efficient because you have a longer horizontal run instead of doing the offset where you go at a 30 degree angle, you're going horizontally for, for that distance and it may not be as efficient. So the last option is just to go straight up out the roof. Um, that takes just a, a, a basic tiny house roof exit kit. Uh, very simple, you have a, a roof support bracket, you have insulated pipe, single to double adapter, and it just comes, comes straight down. So the pros to this type of setup are number one, the cost. It's much more affordable than doing anything going out the wall. Number two, it's gonna function much better. Um, you get a hot fire, those gases are just gonna go straight up and out. And lastly, cleaning it is just kind of a straight shot. So you can do that from the roof or you can do that from the inside, but cleaning it is gonna be much more simple. So the cons to doing this is one, we're gonna have to cut a hole in the roof, but if, if done properly, I don't think that's really a con. I think we can um, install it such that it's, it's gonna be bomber. And especially with it being on the uphill side of the roof, you have the option of using a different kind of flashing, a rigid flashing, and we could also use a silicone flashing as well for redundancy. And then you take that rigid flashing and tuck it under the, uh, the ridge of, the, of the, the top of the roof. Another benefit of having it on the uphill side is you don't have a bunch of snow that's gonna load up on the roof and then slide down the roof and maybe push on, that, on the chimney or on that pipe boot or on that joint. So after looking at all the options, we picked, drum roll please. We're going with option number three. We're gonna go straight up out the roof. It's going to uh, be a much simpler install. Uh, the parts are gonna cost a whole lot less and it's going to function much better. And I think with doing a rigid flashing on the roof, it's gonna be a bomber install for this uh, remote off-grid cabin. So once you've decided on a direction on your install and what you wanna do, we have uh, an online tool, our flu calculator or our parts selector that you can put in um, your space, this type of structure you have, and then what type of stove you have and what type of exit you're gonna have and some key measurements. And it's gonna, it's gonna give you the, the, the parts that you need to do that install, which is, is super helpful to make sure you have everything you need. So once you've planned your install, you have your stove, you have your parts, you're gonna be ready to install. Uh, we put together a playlist of installation videos for you to check out. You can check that out here and we'll be adding to that periodically. Thanks for watching. Another benefit is it makes this cute little cabin look like a Dr. Seuss structure because you have the, uh, the nice little pipe that's wandering up the side. That's actually maybe not a benefit. <laughs> so the pros to coming out this side is you could probably delete those. Uh... <laughs>